Her husband, Stephen, was routinely drugging her. Not just that, when she was drugged, he was taking intimate photographs while she was completely unconscious. Uh, joining us now to tell the harrowing story is, is Candice herself. Um, Candice, your husband was found guilty. You went to court with this. He was charged. What sentence did he get? He got a two-year suspended sentence, which, uh, to me, was just not enough. So he got off with this, basically? Basically, right. yes. What is it like then for you to sit here with us and, you know, we've had people who've come in and told harrowing stories of abuse, but you're now telling the story not only of an abuser, but the abuser is your husband. I mean, how, how does that feel? Well, you just... When you first meet somebody, you don't expect it to turn as sinister as what my husband did. Um, when you think of a dom domestic abuse, you think somebody's hitting you or... Yeah. Um, shouting, that sort of thing, um, demoralising and uh, ruining your, uh, your confidence, which he did all of that. But on top of that, it was the drugs that he was giving me. It wasn't You've just... You've been married a long time. 17 years. Yeah. And they had a daughter together. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, so when you say he, he was controlling you, you believe, mm. looking back at it now... Yes. Um, what sort of things was he doing that, that made you kind of wary of his behaviour? Uh, he, he was, um, when we first got together, um, he was a, a, a person that you would expect him to be, a loving and funny, um, but he turned into a Jacqueline Hyde, and if he didn't get his way, he would get very moody. Sometimes he wouldn't even speak to me for up to eight days, and I didn't know what I'd done wrong. So nothing, he would just say nothing it, at all? Yeah, and if you asked him, he wouldn't tell you? He, yes, he, um, I'd say to him, have I done something wrong? He'd say, no, and it, that'd be all I'd get. So when did you start to think, start feeling unwell and to think something was seriously wrong? We, uh, he moved back in because he had a... F he moved out for five weeks. Yeah, because yeah. things were so bad, as Ruth was mm. describing there, it got so bad between you, you said, I've had enough of this. Um, he, he moves out. Well, first of all, he, first of all, he changes his behaviour towards you, he becomes nice to you, then he takes off. Oh, and yeah. And then he comes back. We, we were, I thought we were getting on so well, and then he suddenly moved out. I cooked him a roast dinner. I was taking my daughter to maths and um, my daughter said to me, um, I don't know why you've done Dad a dinner, he's not coming home. I said, what do you mean he's not coming home? She said, he's um, sent me a text message, he's left. Anyway, five weeks later, he comes back again. Um, but obviously, by that time, I'd decided that the marriage was over. But meanwhile, he obviously had a plan in place, right? He, he obviously had because it was soon after that that I was starting to feel unwell. And that was April 2017. And um, it started to develop a pattern to it. It was weekends. And then it was becoming in the week as well. And I, I sort of guessed round about June time that I think I was being drugged. Um, I went to a drop-in centre near where I live and um, it was at doctors and um, I said to them, I think I'm being drugged. And she said to me, the doctor said to me, well, you need to go to your doctor. We can't possibly dr um, do a drugs test on you because we don't know what we're testing you for. So I went to my doctor and she said pretty much the same thing to me. Um, they didn't want to do these tests because they didn't know what they were drugging me for and it was going to cost them a lot of money to find out. How and did they find out eventually? Eventually, um, I went to A&E on two occasions. The, uh, the second time I went, I'd been to a... I wanted to find a policeman on the street because I didn't know how to handle this and I didn't know whether I... I was frightened of my husband and I didn't know what the consequences were going to be, so I just wanted to find out whether I was actually being drugged to start with. And um, I, f I didn't find a, um, a policeman on the street, so I went to the local police station and the policeman said, there's nobody here that can deal with that sort of case here. You need to go to Ripley headquarters. So I went there. I was driven there because I met up with a friend who, because I was in no state for driving. And um, he... Um, they said, go to um, 
accident emergency and insist that's what you're paying your NHS for. And we went there, uh, there again and they did the routine checks but um, they weren't going to uh, test me for drugs again. And in the end, last minute, they did test me for drugs and I t uh, tested positive. And what, what did they find? What kind of drugs did they tell you then? They didn't tell me what type they'd found. OK, but what, what happened then is obviously the, uh, the drugs were found in your system. Uh, then uh, Stephen pleaded guilty to drugging you uh, and the police, when they uh, arrested him, they searched your home. What did they find in your bedroom? I felt so sick. They, um, they called me up and they'd found in a, uh, in a speaker a hidden camera, video camera. And they also found some photo, hard copy photos in his drawer. And they asked me if I knew anything about these. And they were showing me these photos. I had to walk away. I felt. And these are all photographs of you. Mm. So you're unconscious. And were you naked? There, there was body parts, there was, uh, and yes, it was clearly me, and yes, there was mm -hmm. me and, and, and all And you have no recollection of this whatsoever, no. of this happening? When he used to drug me, um, within five or ten minutes, I'd be completely out of it. He wasn't just drugging me, he was overdosing me. So what, he was putting this in what, a drink or food? Drink and food. Yeah. To start with, it was mainly food, it was, because I like spicy food, it's putting in mm. curries and things like that. OK, now here's the thing. Um, so he gets this 60-month uh, suspended sentence. This is at Derby Crown Court. And uh, you want to appeal this decision. I'm asking you, do you feel that um, your husband was treated with leniency because he was your husband? In other words, if, if, this, was, if this was someone else from outside who was doing, doing this, you think this abuse would have been taken more seriously? I think you could be right. Uh, I think, yes. Um... I don't know why he got such a low sentence as he did, but clearly my uh, daughter's witness statement, which was my key witness, in the witness statement it said everything they needed to know about how yeah. he was... Well, he was, he was charged with two counts of administering poison with intent to injure, one count of voyeurism. And, and he pleaded guilty. But you've, take, you've appealed this sentence, haven't you? And while you do so, he's out there. He's... he's available. He's on the streets. He's, I presume he can work or... Yes, he's still working for the same company. He's still on the streets. Um... And are you still in fear? Yes, I'm definitely in fear. I know that uh, he's going to get his revenge and not if, but when he does, I want people out there to remember me for the person that tried to get justice for what he's done. OK. Candice Lee, an incredible um, situation. I mean, we're sitting listening to you thinking, how could that happen? Who could that happen to?